Please, if you would, join me in a round of applause for all of the teachers in the room this evening. I come from a family of educators, so I was a high school English teacher, but it goes back further than that, and I think it's important for me to share this as well. My mother taught elementary school, kinder and second grade, for 34 years in upstate New York. My uncle was my high school principal, and, and this is all in a very small school system. When I say to New York, Y'all, it's not New York City. It looks a lot more like rural Texas than you think it does. We had 77 students in my graduating class. So when I have a mother who was in my elementary school and my uncle who was in my junior high and high school, I had a lot of education talk all the time. You expand beyond that core, and I had aunts and uncles in education throughout the nation. And it's important for me to share that because not only are we here tonight to celebrate great teachers, but I think it's also important for us to celebrate the hard work that every great teacher puts in. I remember very clearly the family conversations at dinner. I remember my mother spending hours at the, at the kitchen table grading papers, even though it was a second grade paper, grading assignments. That effort still goes in on a regular basis. It doesn't matter what age you're teaching. Teachers for years have dedicated the time, the effort, the energy into doing what's best for students. And I'm honored to be here tonight and say thank you to our teachers that are in this room because you personify the level of excellence that we want to acknowledge in Arlington ISD. I'm grateful for AWARE and the work that you've been doing. I want to be clear, in 1989, I was two years old, plus 12, yes. Um, and while I know that this has been going on a long time, I think it's important to very clearly say thank you to all of you that are uh, with AWARE that put on this event and to dedicate your time, effort, and energy into celebrating something that's extremely important to us, and that's our classroom teachers. So please join me in giving AWARE a round of applause as well. Finally, uh, is a direct message to the teachers and the administrators that, that are here tonight, other than a thank you. I just want to tell you how honored I am to be a part of your team. As I visit schools across the district, and as I see the amazing work that's happening in Arlington ISD, I knew on the outside when I applied for this job, the work that was happening, but I've been blown away by what I've been seeing across the district. I know the effort that you're putting in at night preparing for those lessons. I know the work that you're doing on a regular basis, looking at the 25, 30 kids that are sitting in front of you at different times and saying, what do I need to do to help reach that student? And I am just truly honored to be a part of your team and I hope you see me as a teammate along the way because we're all in this for the exact same reason. We're all in this for the kids. So thank you everyone. If you saw me up here a year ago, you saw that I was in genuine shock when my name was called. I was in the thick of motherhood, parenting a two-year-old and an 11-month-old, and I was still not quite feeling like myself. The two to three years up until that point had been a blur of sleepless nights while trying to do my best as a team leader, teacher, wife, sister, daughter, and friend. To say at times that I felt like I wasn't doing a good job at any of it would have been an understatement. When I was nominated for the AWARE Award, I felt extremely proud and thought to myself, well, even if I don't win, the honor of being nominated was validating enough. I was nervous about it, though, because I had just returned from maternity leave in late October, and I felt like I was in a never-ending rat race of trying to keep up with the demands at home and at school. However, right before observations began, I read an article, or maybe even a Facebook post, that said something along the lines of staying present and being where your feet are. That one statement gave me the confidence to think to myself, when the observers come to visit, I'm just going to do me. No special lessons, just showing up and teaching my students the way that I teach them every day. Once my name was called as the winner, I was in shock. Not because I didn't think I deserved it. Because teaching is not only my passion, but it is my calling. But because I had proven to myself that being me, teaching my way, and staying where my feet are is enough was a moment of validation that says how I show up every day for my students is worthy of recognition. Even now, as I walk down the hallways of my school, when I look in the bookcase and I see my plaque, I'm reminded of this and I smile to myself. 
When I'm working on my lesson plans, I look to my right and I see my trophy. Again, I remind myself, you are enough. I want to thank the AWARE Foundation for their continued mission of awarding excellence in Arlington ISD, for looking at what is happening in our classrooms and seeing the love and care that we pour into our students every day. The things that aren't always flashy, but solid. I would like to thank my administration for their support and leadership. I have been at Farrell Elementary for the past eight years under the leadership of Glenn Brunk and Dana Ware. I could not ask for better leaders. I would like to thank my husband, Brian, for partnering with me in raising our children, supporting me and listening to me as I talk through lessons or even vent about a hard day. Also, to my children, thank you for pushing me to strive for better. I am a better teacher because I give to my students what I would want for my own kids. To my fellow educators, if you remember nothing else from this speech, please remember you are enough. Your passion, love, care, patience, and thought out lessons are enough. Stay present, stay where your feet are. Take a deep breath and remind yourself, I got this. You are truly rocking it every day. And to the question of how I spent the money, I got my kids new summer clothes. I went on a little trip to Memphis with my husband and my class last year had the most epic pizza party ever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. I cannot explain how honored I am to have been a recipient of the AWARE Award. To even be nominated and go through the process, the evaluation, it was a great privilege. The panel of evaluators who spent time in my classroom and interviewed me were very kind and encouraging. While I often find these type of situations nerve-wracking, the AWARE team was a joy to interact with. Thank you for all your time effort and care you put into the award. This is not likely to come as a groundbreaking discovery to a room like this, but teaching is hard. The needs of the kids are always changing, and so should our, strength, our strategies to reach them. It is because of this that I have learned to embrace the discomfort, and winning the AWARE Award last year was affirmation of this. As an educator, it is our role to challenge our students to think more critically be confident, and become more accepting of a world with different opinions. Part of this process is to push students to, into discomfort and not being afraid to make a mistake. But as lifelong learners, shouldn't educators also challenge themselves and each other to try new things, some of which may be outside of our own comfort zone? One of my first experiences and challenges at ASD was teaching pre-K. Uh, I was a third grade teacher prior. This was a time where the district was just starting to implement the active learning cycle, or ALC. For those of you who may not be familiar, ALC is a strategy that encourages students to take an active role in their learning and allows each student to engage in lessons based on their current understanding of the content. A lot of ALC involves self-guided learning, reflection, and goal setting. With ALC being so new to the district and it involving independent learning, many believed that it would not work in a pre-K classroom. The kids were too young and hadn't yet experienced structured in a classroom for it to work. But if ALC was going to such a great strategy for the other elementary grade levels and the direction that the district ultimately was going, I thought, why wait to implement it in my room? Thankfully, I had a supportive, encouraging admin that allowed me to take risks, get out of my comfort zone, and implement ALC in my pre-K classroom. And while it wasn't perfect and there were a lot of trial and error, it was successful. By taking a risk, trying something new, and getting out of my comfort zone, I learned in the process. A lot of the lessons learned while implementing this new strategy in pre-K carried into my experiences teaching sixth grade and then second grade last year. By going outside of my comfort zone, I gained valuable experiences and growth. I could see the benefit in my classroom, and the AWARE Award served as that validation. Last year, with a desire to find new challenges and growth, I pursued a position as an instructional coach. Having only instructed classrooms of children, this too presented an opportunity to go beyond what was comfortable for me. 
I was blessed to be offered the instructional coach role at Beckham Elementary and have the opportunity to collaborate with many wonderful teachers. In this role, I challenge our staff to be courageous, try new things, and go beyond what they find comfortable for the growth of our staff and students. In the process, I hope to be as encouraging and supportive as my past admin and those that I had the experience with from the AWARE Foundation. And so I challenge us all to push beyond our comfort zones and find new ways to encourage students, grow professionally, and to put ourselves out there for, the good, for all the good things that happen when we step outside of the box. I would like to thank the Award um, Foundation for this wonderful evening and being so supportive. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening to the esteemed members of the AWARE Foundation and board, um, Arlington City Council members, Dr. Smith, ASD district leaders, administrators, and all of the amazing AWARE teachers for the 2023-2024 school year. Um, I wish to start this evening by expressing my sincerest gratitude to a few groups of people. First, to my family. My legend of a sister is here with me tonight. Um, oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, you guys keep me grounded and push me to be the very best version of me that I can be, so thank you for that. Um, to my daughter, Charlotte, who's not here tonight, but I have to mention her. Um, she is currently a part of the village that is AISD as a glorious and ambitious and slightly stubborn kindergartner. Um, she is my reason for everything and for every decision that I make, it all comes back to her. To the faculty at JB Little, that has actually become more like a family to me. Tonight especially, I see Miss Higby, who is a nominee, and with Charlotte, oh gosh y'all. Charlotte's most incredible pre-K teacher, forever grateful for her. To my principal, Beth Ann, who saw a passion in me that was worth nominating for this tremendous honor and sent me on this remarkable journey. And finally, to the AWARE Foundation. Thank you for the amazing work that you do in recognizing the outstanding educators in Arlington. From where I'm sitting, or standing, the AWARE Foundation goes far beyond recognizing stellar educators. In fact, I would say that by organizing this, this award the way that you do, you help those of us that are all too often closed off or secluded in our classrooms feel seen and heard. The opportunity to have observers in our classrooms feels more like an invitation to welcome guests into our little world, to share the families that we create, and the memories that we make. For me personally, AWARE has given me infinitely more than I could ever describe. Of course, the lovely $3,000 was um, a part of that. Uh, a large portion of that money sent me on a trip to New York to fulfill my ridiculous Harry Potter dreams. Um, another part paid for summer camps and swim lessons for Charlotte, and the last little bit went back into my classroom for this current school year, of course. However, what I truly got from AWARE, what I took with me and still have with me to this day, was not related to the money at all. And I didn't even know it until really just a few weeks ago. I'm convinced that winning this award last year prepared me for the season that God knew I was about to enter. <laughs> to the AWARE Foundation, you helped me find my voice as a teacher. You granted me the confidence that I could be an advocate for the children in my classroom. You gave me the gumption to stand up for what is right and honorable and true in regards to the precious souls that I'm interested with. And I have a courage of a conviction now that I did not have before. And for that, I am most grateful. Before last year, I knew I loved teaching. I'd considered it a calling, not a career, Danielle, wherever you went in life. Okay. Um, 
and that was, I'm pretty sure, the title of my Kiwanis letter, actually, Calling Not a Career. Uh, but anyways, in hindsight, I, I don't really think I knew what that meant. I read something recently that said a calling is when your passion, Jamie, we're, we're, we have a theme tonight, apparently, um, when your passion meets something that this world desperately needs. When two come together, that's when the magic happens. If that's not a true definition of teaching, then I don't know what is. This room is full of that passion. That much is evident. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't true, just like my principal saw my passion, your nominators saw yours. And I see your passion. I see your power and your purpose. This world desperately needs public educators. The children in our classrooms are craving our time, attention, and direction. They're looking to us to ignite their passion, their power, and their purpose. And guess what, y'all? We do that every single day. Teachers, we are called. And in the current climate, our work is hard. Let's take heart knowing that, whether we know it or not, in one way or another, we are always prepared for the seasons that lie ahead. We can be confident. We can have the gumption and the courage to weather any storm. To the AWARE Foundation, thank you for the preparation. I am eternally grateful for the influence that you've had in my life. Thank you for the impact that you have on the teachers and thereby the classrooms of AISD. Students like my little Charlotte are better for it. Thank you. Hello, everybody. First, I have to give honor to God. I have to start there because I am no thing without him. And this is just true. So when you walk into my classroom, I often have people say there's such a peace here. That's because I carry him with me. Um, every day is different, as we all know, if you're an educator. I also must thank Pastor Frank and Mrs. Maddie L. Holly, who were my first teachers. I must thank my children, Daryl, Daniel, Divine, and David, who were my first students. I must thank Principal Maroney, because she's the one who threw my name into the hat. And then I must thank my current principal, Dr. Erin Fogelman for her continued support. I feel a little strange because I'm usually, for let's say close to 30 years, anytime something major in my life happened, my husband was able to be here. He's not able to be here, so I just feel strange. However, his prayers are with me and that's I'm so grateful for. I had 727 words typed out. I'm an English teacher. <laughs> Five minutes rehearsed, and then God said, no. I said, that's not fair. <laughs> so I'm just going to start like this. I'm a little girl from South Central Los Angeles who never wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be an entertainer. I wanted to be singing on stage and doing my thing, and I guess I got my wish as an English teacher, right? <laughs> Three things informed me as a teacher. First was, I was like Ruby Bridges. I was the first African-American student to be enrolled in Paseo del Rey Elementary School, and it was tough. They didn't want me there, and I just wanted to go to class, right? I had a math teacher who sat me outside of his room every day. Up until then, I never had an adult be mean to me, so to me, I just thought I was new to the school, so I was going outside to do my work until I get caught up. Many years passed before I really understood he was struggling. The second thing that informs me as a teacher is Mrs. Brown. Ms. Brown was chocolate like me, but she spoke Spanish. She wore eyelashes. She was full of light. I love that woman. Therefore, I get up every morning no matter how I feel, and I get myself together. Because I'm very clear that some of my students don't have mothers in the home. 
I'm aware that some of them are being raised in some difficult circumstances, and to them, I'm the only mother, auntie, grandmother that they see. The third thing that informs me is a teacher that I cannot remember her name. But when I went into the ninth grade, this teacher told me I'd never speak Spanish. And I made up my mind. I would not sit kids outside the classroom. I would make sure I look good for them every day and that I would never tell them what they could or could not do. In the 30 years since I've been in the classroom, so much has changed. And I must say that I'm very sad. When I see TikToks of people, children hitting teachers and cursing them out, it breaks my heart. And I say to myself, because someone just asked me, do you ever thought of getting a gun? I said, the day that I feel I need a gun to be in a classroom is my last day. My children take care of me. No matter what grade I've taught, my children have always made sure that Mrs. James was fine. So with that being said, when I received the love gift from the AWARE Foundation, who I'm so very grateful for, right, even considering me, when I received that love gift, I tried to spend it. I can spend money, y'all. <laughs> but I could not spend that money, and I couldn't understand why. You know, I could buy little things for the kids, but for the most part, I, I couldn't spend the money. And then I had a major change in my life. And that major change, you know, something that happens can be so bitter, but there's something that comes like a collateral beauty. Something good can come out of that. And in the quiet time sitting alone, I began to think, God, what do you want? What do you want me to do with this money? Since then, the little thoughts started going in my mind. And the decision I made, I developed a nonprofit. It's entitled Greater Capacity Consulting. Our goal is GCC is dedicated to equipping, educating, and providing exposure to the next generation, empowering them to impact the world. We believe that empowering the development of future leaders will strengthen communities, thus positively impacting the world. A lot has changed since I sat in that seat nervous, wondering was my name going to be called. One of the things that has changed is that the love of my life, Stephen Henry James, closed his eyes for the final time, slipped through my fingers like sand and into the arms of his heavenly father. When I was walking on stage, my man said, go baby, he's not here today. But thank God for technology. Go, baby! I'm thrilled to be here with y'all celebrating such fantastic educators. What a thing to celebrate. I'm so excited. This really is a special occasion, and I'm honored to get to be a part of this and to be a part of it last year. And to be surrounded with such inspirational educators again is really touching and rejuvenating. Uh, sometimes, as educators, we get to have the uh, experience of hearing everyone's opinions about how we can do our job better. And sometimes those opinions are from people who don't share our field or our expertise. And so it's really nice that we get to put all that aside tonight and focus on the positive, what's going well the heartbeat of education, which is the teachers. And I can't think of a better thing to celebrate right now. Despite all the hurdles that we have to overcome as public educators, everyone in the room has clearly committed to fostering a caring environment that puts kids first. I'm so thankful that the AWARE Foundation is revitalizing teachers by focusing on the positive and celebrating the good things that's happening in the classrooms of Arlington, Texas, because clearly there is a lot to celebrate. 
last year when I was selected as a high school teacher of the year, it was an electric motivator for me. Um, for the past few years, I have been on a journey to develop my educational leadership skills. And so being recognized for my work in the classroom was very affirming to me. It, um, it showed me that maybe, maybe I have what it takes. It felt good. Uh, so I want to thank the AWARE Foundation for that boost of energy and excitement. Because of their generosity, I was able to finish paying off my master's degree in educational leadership. And for the past, uh, for the past year, I've had the opportunity to grow in my leadership skills with the Aspire Leadership Academy and through my roles on campus. And I'm very excited to see where that journey in education and leadership will take me. And I'm so grateful to AWARE for being there as a motivator, for a positive support system, for the kindness, acknowledgement, and generosity that they have shown all of us because it created a very significant and tangible impact on our growth. So thank you. Thank you, AWARE. I also really want to thank AWARE for giving alternative education a seat at the table. Um, I'm a teacher at Venture High School, and what we do is a little bit different. Um, sometimes people who come in to observe an alternative classroom setting don't necessarily know what they're looking at if they're used to traditional education. So the fact that the AWARE Foundation came into our campus, came into our classrooms, and acknowledged the good that was going on in there really meant a lot to me as an alternative educator. Uh, the students at Venture are unique and they're thriving in an alternative setting. So I applaud AWARE for being able to see that Venture is a place that can make magic for students that can give students a chance when others have given up on them, that can boost the underdog to great heights. Thank you again for giving alternative education a seat at the table. And I want to end by reiterating my, my unyielding love for public education. What we get to do each day as educators is such a gift. And today, I spent some time reflecting on that gift and thinking of the 10 years that I've spent in education and I thought of the very first kid that came in my classroom, his name was Brooks, and I thought about the last kid that left my room today and his name is Aiden and all the kids that have come in between those two kids and all the special moments that I've gotten to share with those students because I picked the best career in the world. And I, I think about how that bright, radiant joy of education can sometimes be tarnished by the stresses of testing or paperwork or tedious policy, but it always shines back through when we get to see those aha moments or you know, when we get to see a kid's character grow in our classrooms, when we get to really see kids' hearts, that's what makes all of it worth it. Um, and from what I've seen and heard tonight, um, even in the, uh, excuse me, even from what I've seen tonight, everybody here is somebody who can recognize students' hearts. And so I feel like I'm in a place of um, true celebration tonight, and I'm honored to be here. Um, I want to end with a quote from a very wise educator, um, Professor Albus Dumbledore, uh, who, who once said, Happiness can be found even in the darkest times, if one only remembers to turn on the light. And from what I've seen and heard tonight, I'm surrounded by educators who always remember to turn on the light, and that thought brings my heart a lot of comfort. It is a privilege to be sharing joy with the people in this room and who are making a difference in the lives of others. So congrats to everyone here tonight. It really is an honor being here with you all. Thank you.